Okay, we're going to talk about voltage-gated sodium channels and answer the questions, what is the structure of a voltage-gated sodium channel and what are its three conformational states? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. So a voltage-gated sodium channel, is a tr these are transmembrane proteins that are open based on changes in membrane potential and that results in an influx of sodium ions down their concentration gradient. Now, the anatomy of these channels is as such. So there's a voltage-gated sodium channel in this schematic that I'm just going to abbreviate as VGSC from here on. And it has on the interstitial side an activation gate, which is closed when this channel is at rest, but it opens after the membrane depolarizes again. This is a voltage-gated sodium channel, so the gate changes based upon the membrane voltage. But on the cytoplasmic side, there is an inactivation gate that is open at rest, but then it closes after the membrane depolarizes, and it stays closed until the resting membrane potential is reestablished. Now, let's take those structures and put it into context. So, a voltage-gated sodium channel has three conformational states. We say that it is closed, or it's open, or it is inactive or refractory period. So let's start with the first phase or conformational state when it's closed. So it's closed, which means that this voltage-gated sodium channel is impermeable to sodium ions, but can be activated if the resting membrane potential depolarizes. So here the cell is at rest, which if this is a neuron, that's negative 70 millivolts. And the activation gate you see is closed, so that means the high concentration of sodium in the interstitial space cannot diffuse down its gradient because the gate is closed. And recall that sodium is an ion and it's charged, so it cannot diffuse through the membrane and needs a transporter. So we say that this voltage-gated sodium channel is closed. It's impermeable to sodium when the cell is at rest, which is negative 70 millivolts. It's the horizontal line on an action potential. So let's take a look. This is a neuron action potential where the x-axis is time in milliseconds and the y-axis in voltage in millivolts. And there we have that horizontal line on an action potential, which means the cell is at rest and the membrane is impermeable to sodium. The voltage-gated sodium channels are closed unless they open, which is the second conformational state, which is now meaning this channel is permeable to sodium. So how does that happen? Well, an approaching action potential makes the internal surface of the membrane a little less negative. And say it goes to negative 55 millivolts, what happens now is the activation gate opens. And when that occurs, we say that this voltage-gated sodium channel is open. So sodium can have an influx down its gradient and the membrane will depolarize to positive 30 millivolts. So there we have an influx of sodium. Now notice when there are now these positively charged sodium ions on the internal surface of this membrane. Um, and I'll say that often we make it look like it's a waterfall. This is more like a trickle that is coming down. And what happens, and even just a few of those picomoles of sodium can depolarize that membrane to positive 30 millivolts. So what we see is um, an approaching action potential depolarizes the membrane to negative 55 millivolts. We say that's threshold. And when threshold is reached, the voltage-gated sodium channels open and there's an influx of sodium. And that positively charged sodium ions, those picomoles, cause that internal surface to go from negative 70 to positive 30 millivolts. We say that's the upstroke of the neuronal action potential or when the membrane depolarized. Which brings us to the third conformational state, the inactive state or the refractory period. This is when that channel is impermeable to sodium and it cannot be activated until that resting membrane potential is restored. So we take, so when we have a, when the, when we have a depolarized uh, membrane potential at positive 30, what happens when you hit that positive 30, that inactivation gate closes shut. And when that happens, we say that this is an inactive um, uh, voltage-gated sodium channel. This creates a refractory period, which stops any action potential from moving in an opposite direction or from starting another action potential. So sodium cannot get through. When that occurs, that positive 30 millivolts stops rising 
And the membrane is now said to be depolarized, but how do we restore the membrane potential or how do we repolarize the membrane potential? That's where these voltage-gated potassium channels happen. Because when we hit positive, it's actually even before positive 30. It's probably something like negative um, 30 or 40 or 30 millivolts. These potassium channels open. They just open a little bit slower. And when they do open these potassium channels, then we have an efflux of potassium. So an efflux of positively charged ions to the outside of the cell. When that occurs, we then go back and repolarize the membrane to negative 70 millivolts because we've now taken positive ions from the internal surface and uh, exported them or, or they've gone down their gradient. And so we see that we go from positive 30 to down. We actually hyperpolarize a little bit here, but this is the downstroke. This is where the membrane repolarizes back to its original resting membrane potential. Now, what about this potassium and sodium? Because remember how there's a high concentration of sodium outside and a high concentration of potassium inside. We've just put sodium in and potassium out. So how do we restore these ions? It's through the uh, sodium potassium pump that ATP, where it'll then take three sodium ions and pump them to back against their concentration gradients and pump two potassium ions against their gradient. And that's how we do it until it restores those ions. So a little review, that efflux of potassium is what causes it to repolarize the membrane back to negative 70 millivolts. And when that occurs, the inactivation gate opens and the activation gate closes. And if that looks familiar, it's because that's where we back to the first conformational state. When this voltage-gated sodium channel is closed, which means it is impermeable to sodium, but it can be activated now if that resting membrane potential depolarizes. We say that the cell is at rest. Now, where are voltage-gated sodium channels found? Well, neurons are a big one. And so we see the upstroke of neuronal action potential is where we find these voltage-gated sodium channels, but also uh, contractile heart muscle cells, their action potential, phase zero, or the upstroke, is also where we find these, um, uh, they're fast and these voltage-gated sodium channels. And so these voltage-gated sodium channels are responsible for that rapid upstroke of neuronal and cardiac action potentials, and also the rapid impulse conduction through neurons and cardiac tissue. And that, my friends, is the voltage-gated sodium channel in a nutshell.